Well, you join me this afternoon, Sunday, in the beautiful rolling hills of the Cotswolds area of outstanding natural beauty, with quite the opposite of outstanding natural beauty, the Grand Challenge bike. Just come out to give it a potter around, really, because I think it might be suffering from uh, old engineitis. I took it on the green laning adventure that you saw in the last video before I sorted out my uh, helmet mic. And unbeknownst to me, it used about 250 mil of oil during that adventure um, and had dropped off the bottom of the sight glass. And it looks suspiciously like in uh, only a handful of miles that I've done today, it may have drunk the same again. So it's either going to be seals around the valves or it's going to be the piston rings. Neither are particularly difficult to sort out, um, but <laughs> either of which have to be sorted out, because otherwise I'm going to need an oil bowser with me um, to keep up with the amount of oil that this bike is going to use. So when I figure out which it is, maybe there'll be some more videos about um, getting this thing moving. Unless anyone in the comments knows, is there anything slightly more modern that slips into this, e.g., I know it's an SR125 slash TW125 engine. Does, I don't know, something like the Yamaha YBR engine, or the carburetor one before they went fuel injection, does that fit in here? Um, and if it does, <laughs> is there anything I need to do? If anyone does know that, give me a shout. Uh, if not, might have to have a bit of a look. I know they look similar, so... Yeah, it's just a case of sitting down with a pen and paper and understanding it. Probably wouldn't be too difficult to do the um, top end work on this anyway. But uh, I can't bring myself to do it half assed so I might have to get someone to, to hone it out. So again, if anyone knows somebody in uh, Warwickshire or North Oxfordshire nearby, then um, I'd certainly be interested. I don't want the uh, full classic restoration job. I just want running and not burning a crap load of oil. So uh, I think we'll um, turn it round and take it home the fun way. Hopefully it has enough oil to get there. If not, we'll find out. I look like a complete plonker riding this bike at the moment because um, <laughs> where I made my exhaust modifications I did it once, I trimmed it all up, tacked it into place, finished all the welds um, and it was fine when I tacked it up um, and then I went out green laning the other day knocked it about a bit and it moved forward probably only just an inch but just enough to catch the back of my boot and my uh, jeans so I got a little bit singed, and so now I'm riding duck-footed, thinking to myself, maybe it's time to take a second stab at the exhaust. Which, I suppose, got plenty of time to do if I'm going to have to take the engine apart to sort out where the oil's going. There's part of me that thinks, hey, it might just be uh, valve oil seals, because it smokes like a pig after it's been stopped. But... The fact that it won't top 50 mile an hour without an awful lot of um, coaxing sort of suggests to me that it might be low on compression. Unfortunately, my compression tester doesn't have a small enough spark plug um, adapter, you know, spark plug hole adapter, to fit the top end of this engine. So I can't do a compression test on it, but I'd imagine, judging by how easy it uh, spins over, it's probably going to be the piston rings. Which, like I said, I don't mind, but I kind of want to do it properly, um, especially if there's, you know, longer country length, country width runs to be done on this bike. It's going to need all the help it can get, but I kind of don't want to pay the money. We got about 300 odd, 350 quid left in the Grand Challenge budget. I'd like to not go above that for the sake of a bike that, let's be honest, even in tip-top working condition, um, with the mods that I've done to it, is not going to be worth 
much more than about 500 quid. Yeah, I can smell the smell of oil following me. <laughs> I just caught a whiff. I think we'll stick to back roads just in case the worst should happen. I kind of wonder um, if I might get away with pulling it apart and using a drill mounted auto honer the three honing stones on a stick basically to put the um, pattern back into the bore. The real problem is, in order to um, ensure it works properly, I need to know whether it needs an oversized piston and uh, rings, well, oversized piston and rings or not. When you do this job, as I understand it properly, you take it all apart, you run a boring machine down to a known tolerance, and then you fit oversized piston and rings to compensate for that and you put it all back together again. The theory is piston rings are supposed to be a... Um, a not disposable, that's not the word. A, uh, a wear part. Like brake pads. That you replace, but um, it seldom happens that actually you get away without damage being done in the first place to, you know, everything involved. just about balancing, um, you know, how worth it is or isn't. I have looked to see if there's second-hand engines available, but these bikes are so long in the tooth that um, any second-hand engines are just going to be in the same state as this one. I think the one that's on eBay at the moment is about 350 and a I don't really want to spend £350 on an engine for a bike that I spent £280 on in the first place. Um, and secondly, it's got... I want to say that one's 19 odd thou on it. So it's not far behind this one on uh, 27 thou. The other option, I suppose, and I only just thought of this one really, is... Um, there are copies of the TW125 Sky Team or Lifan or, uh, you know, whoever copies of the uh, TW125, which will have the same engine. There's a few differences, I think, with the output shaft length, because the other bike has a wider rear wheel. But that should be easy to sort out. That's not part of the engine that we've got problems with. I wonder if one of those clone engines would work. Although, to be honest, by the time I've gone to that point, the clone engine's liable to be less um, reliable than the original engine with new rings, and I expect it'll end up costing the same, especially if the damn thing's set up for EFI and it needs the um, stators and generators and everything sorted out. We'll have to muse on it. I'm hoping that someone's going to... Um, say, oh well, there's this, um, you know, brilliant uh, backstreet bloke who rebuilds engines and I'm sure he'll do you a, a deal if you go down there and mention my name. People who say that are usually called Dave. Go down there and tell them Dave sent you. Don't mind paying for that. To be honest, don't mind paying for a new piston and rings as well um, from someone who knows how to specify them properly, but... How long has that indicator been on? I think this bike is a an absolute uh, case for those annoying beepy things that Nathan's got on um, some of his posty bikes. I hate them, but at least they stop you looking like a complete wally. Incidentally, that's one of the things that's been playing up on this bike more than anything is the electrics behind the headlight. The telltales haven't been working for the indicators and every now and then the left indicators have just completely given up. Um, so I took it all apart and it turned out that the connectors, they're just tired. They've opened up. They're only those old um, brass bullet connectors. They're the, the Y ones where you've got, I don't know, for example, one ground splits into two to go to one of each indicator. 
and they're just worn out over time and vibration and, and heat cycles so I crimped them shut although uh, I didn't take the other connectors out first so I just sort of crimped the whole lot together they'll still a pull, pull apart if needs be but you should put a bit more life in them before I have to pop them all off and uh, replace them with something a bit newer in other news and completely a <laughs> different subject I suppose I'm finally comfortable on this bike um, it's a bit of a long story I have ridiculously short legs and a really long body I'm not a hugely short chap at 5'11 um, I've even been known to measure closer to 6 foot with a willing breeze but unfortunately that's all body and no legs so at best guess my inseam's 26 and a half inches which is a size way too small for any conventional bike gear to work in. The closest I've got are the JTS Cool Rider AAA rated uh, jeans that I'm wearing now. And they only go down to, I think it's 27 slash 28. I'm not very precise on the size. The fantastic jeans, unlike a lot that I've tried, they fit around uh, my knees properly, so the knee pads are where I'd want them. Unfortunately, <clears throat> that still leaves just enough jean down to the back of my boots to get under my heels so I was wearing these with braces and um, you know like up and over your shoulders elastic braces which was fine but even with those at their absolute tightest um, it was that situation where I get off the bike and if I have to walk anything more than 20 yards I'm hoiking them up every 100 steps it's sort of been the story of my life with trousers um, but <laughs> I finally got wound up and decided I'd develop another skill to solve the problem and bought a sewing machine. Uh, I've got family history my, on my dad's side. His mum was a seamstress, so I figure it's in my DNA somewhere. And um, I've spent this afternoon rather domestically sat about hemming trousers. And I've brought these ones up just enough now that they um, sit nicely on my boots and I can wander around and where they fall down to on my hips means they sit perfectly above my boots so finally short fat bastard trousers that work so I'm made up about that and then um, genuinely wondering whether I should start some sort of business making short fat bastard motorbike gear and not just the short fat bastard motorbike gear they already make the the I'm a hopelessly short fat bastard motorbike gear please help me because I'm like a sausage poured into a bucket I don't know. I'm sure it'd attract some interesting customers one way or another. Welcome to the lovely village of Tottenham. Look at that. Picturesque uh, park to stop and put more oil in the bike. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to see how bad it is by the time I get home. That might spur me on to ordering some um, standard sized piston rings and a honing tool off of eBay. Might as well give it a go, I suppose. Anyway, I'm just rambling now, so I might clip in some more footage if anything interesting happens. But um, other than that, thanks for listening to me ramble. Peace. <laughs>